You might have heard of a phrase called moto vlogging, but if you haven't, I'll explain what it is as far as I can make out. Basically, someone rides around on their motorcycle with a camera attached to it whilst talking about what's going on around them and giving a few bits of information about things that they see on their travels. Some people like these videos and other people like to make them. It gives people an excuse to get out on the bike, really, which I think is what a lot of it's about. And I can understand that because I like to get out on the bike as well. Now, the Sony Action Camera would be a good vlogging camera because it has a microphone in on the bottom there. However, it isn't because the problem is once it's inside its waterproof case or it's got the clip mounted to the bottom, you can't get to the microphone socket. And that's a bit of a problem for some people. Anyone, I suppose, that wants to use it as a vlogging camera. Well, you can get round it. Sony do have the appropriate mounts. And if you combine those with a few other mounts from other people, you can make a good vlogging camera. I'm going to show you how I did that myself. So in the end, I'll be able to get my motorcycle helmet, attach the camera to the side of it and go out for a ride, which is what you're going to see for the last 20 or so minutes, probably of this video, if I get it all up and running properly. I'll be demonstrating things using the Sony AS100, but the same information goes for the AS10, AS15 or AS30. The first thing you need is the Sony Skeleton Frame, the AKA SF1. Once you've got one of these, of course, you need to open it up. Inside the packet, you'll find that there's two different attachments for it. We don't need both of them. We only need the smaller one of these. One of them will hold the skeleton frame at a right angle, so you can put it on a tripod. And then the other one attaches on the side, so you can hold it sideways on. That's the one we're going to be using. So first off, you get that mount there, and you click it into one of the sides of the frame. doesn't really matter which one, whichever one you prefer, click it in that side. As you can see now, we've got a tripod screw hole in the side of the case. Uh, we get the camera, open up the door on the bottom of it first of all, the door that lets you get to the microphone socket, feed it into the case. It's a little bit fiddly because you have to sort of feed it in and close it at the same time, but there you go, lock it in place. And now we can get to that three and a half millimeter stereo mic in jack on the bottom, and we've got a tripod screw mount on the side. Now you could go very simple here and just use the Sony mount. You could screw one of those into the side of the skeleton frame and then attach it to one of the Sony adhesive mounts. So that's a fine uh, solution for some things, but it just doesn't work on my motorcycle helmet. If I put it down here where my contour mount would go, look at the angle of the camera. The horizon would be all at an angle, so that's no use there. So I'd need to move it further up. I think it'd need to get to about there for the horizon to be straight, which looks fine. You think, well, that's all right. But it isn't, because if we look at it straight on, look where the camera's pointing. It's about 45 degrees away from head on. So I'm driving along, I'm just sort of seeing things that are going along down the side of me. So that's no use either. So what I need to do, I need to better somehow get the camera away from the helmet a little bit, and then also have it tiltable. And that's where the next bit comes in. We need a GoPro mount. This is a fake GoPro mount, but the same applies for a real one, of course. That's because this one came in a box of stuff I got from China. This is the important bit. This is the tripod quarter inch screw to GoPro adapter. So attach these things together here and uh, screw them up so it's nice and uh, tight. There you go. Right, now that is what we're going to attach into the side of the skeleton frame rather than the Sony mount. So we just screw that into there. And that's it, we're pretty much sorted. So all I've done there is I've stuck a um, GoPro mount to the side of my motorcycle helmet here, and we click that in place. And as you can see now, the camera's a little bit away from the side of the helmet, but I could also move it in and out, and also twist it so it goes up and down, so I get it nice and straight. So that's it. The only other thing to do now is to plug it in a microphone. This is a microphone I reviewed before. Probably not ideal for this purpose, but it's the only one I've got. So I'm plugging it in there. As you can see, I've rooted it down here. I've put some tape in to root it around so the um, wire doesn't flap about. And I've put the microphone up at the front here. Now my helmet isn't the ideal helmet for this because it lets a bit of wind in at the bottom. It's not a full face helmet. So you might hear a bit of wind noise on this uh, video, but uh, there you go. That's my solution. That wire needs to go into my pocket as well. There's loads of wire there that I don't really need. Now the links to all the things I've just shown you are in the video description and they're also over on my blog. But uh, enough of this. Anyway, let's go moto vlogging. Oh, 
surprised how many people feel a need to take sides when it comes to consumer electronics companies. Whether it's Apple versus Android or Apple versus Google or Apple versus Samsung or GoPro versus Sony. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I'll buy the product that suits me the best. I'm not going to rubbish the other one. I like the GoPro products. I like the mounting system. The mounting system on the GoPro is a lot more flexible than it is on the Sony. However, I prefer the features on the Sony. The built-in image stabilisation, the uh, water resistant case on the AS100, the decent quality stereo microphones, there are just a few of the things that attract me to the Sony over the GoPro. But I know a lot of people will have other reasons why they prefer the GoPro. That's fine. I don't work for either company. It really doesn't matter to me which product you buy. It just matters which product I buy. I'm not going to go and tell you which one to get. However, if you've got the Sony, don't feel that you're restricted just to using the Sony mounts. The fact is, GoPro and people that are copying the GoPro mounts make a vast range of uh, different things that you can attach GoPros to, all sorts of things. So why not take advantage of that and use some of those mounts with your Sony? And you can, as long as you know what to do. So as I showed you before, I got the, Sco the Sony Skeleton case. Now the Skeleton case costs about £25 in the UK. Added to that, I put on the little adapter which converts the uh, GoPro mount into a tripod screw. And then of course I got a GoPro type um, base which then clicks into, I think it's a real GoPro sticky mount on my helmet, I'm not too sure. I've got a sort of drawer full of these things, I'm not too sure which ones I was using. But anyway, you see how it all goes together and it works really well. Now of course I mentioned before I didn't like putting the, uh, the camera down there on my uh, handlebars because it's... Um, got a lot of vibration through the handlebars. These aren't vibrating handlebars by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, some handlebars on bikes could give you a sort of white finger or something. Now, these are, these are quite nice. However, still, it's that kind of constant that goes through them, which makes the CMOS wobble. So, what I did, don't want to use it on there, stick it on the helmet. Now, of course, when you put something on a helmet, your body's doing all the dampening. It's uh, taking all the vibration out of the thing. So, really, your body's acted like uh, one of those steady cams. Uh, you've seen that uh, YouTube video, I'm assuming, where someone put a, a camera on the head of a chicken and the chicken's head just stays perfectly still. We're pretty similar to chickens, really, in that regard. We'll try and keep our heads still while everything else is moving. So that's why this camera is now dampened down. So anyway, if you want to get the best camera, pick the camera you like first of all and then sort them out afterwards, which is what I've done. Yeah, so the place we're going through now is a place called Eccleston. I'm going to take you around the back here where there's a few little shops and we'll just have a look around the back and I just want to show you something uh, briefly and I'll come back out again. Let's just go down here. All right, notice on the left there, let's, uh, let's look at it this way. See that post box? Gold. It's gold because Sir Bradley Wiggins lives near here in Eccleston. I thought you might want to see that. Sir Bradley Wiggins, in case you don't know, which I'd imagine some international people wouldn't, is a Tour de France winning, Olympic winning, gold medal typey chap who became Sir Bradley Wiggins the other year after all the achievements he did. I think he won the Olympics and the uh, Tour de France all in the same year. So he's a, a famous resident of this place. Another uh, famous thing, I suppose, this was in the, uh, oh, what's it called now, uh, the Doomsday Book, 1086 Doomsday Book, this uh, little place is mentioned, not Sainsbury's I'm sure, but you know, the, the area in general. Another interesting thing I'm going to show you, I say interesting, you might not find these interesting, there's a very old house down here on the right. I always notice it as I go past. I'm sure there's lots of old houses here, but this is one that has its date written above the door, which is always a nice thing. Uh, I'll just get through this speed camera at 30, and then I'll show you the very old house. I think it's 
15 something, I don't know, we'll sort of see in a minute, just around the corner. Now you might notice some wind noise coming through on this, I do have a sort of open face helmet a little bit, wind could get underneath the bottom, don't blame that on the camera, that's the microphone and the setup I've got, obviously if you were doing this you'd probably have a proper setup. Right, there's the very old house on the right, let's see what it says above the door, 1659 that was built, 1659, a minute to five o'clock, it's pretty impressive. Anyway, I'm just going to go over this little bridge here. We'll have a look at this first of all. This is a nice bridge. Very dangerous, so you can imagine quite a lot of accidents probably hit that wall. You see how that wall's new over there? Not surprising. I imagine a few people have taken that out over the years. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you didn't, it's hard luck. Uh, you just wasted all your time. And I just went out for a nice bike ride. So I'm happy anyway. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.